Lisbon is one of the oldest and most beautiful cities in Europe. After exploring Portugal's capital for altogether more than a week, I want to use this video to introduce you to its central neighborhoods, major attractions and I'm going to show you where I ate and where I stayed. Portugal's capital is located at the mouth of the Tagus River and is the westernmost capital of a mainland European country. With its rich architecture, beautiful old town and its warm climate, Lisbon's popularity grew massively over the past few years and is now anything but a hidden gem. Nowadays the city attracts more than 6 million tourists per year, drawn to its historical and cultural heritage, good transportation connections and good touristic infrastructure. This, however, also results in a problem called over-tourism, which affects tourists, but even more the locals, who have to deal with increasing prices and gentrification. Therefore, I'd like to encourage you to follow a few simple rules to do your part in solving this issue. First and foremost, try to avoid short-term rentals and use local hostels and hotels for your stay. With that, you aren't contributing to the disappearance of traditional dwellers from the central neighborhoods who can't afford the rental prices anymore. When you eat out and go shopping, it's important to support local businesses as much as possible, which will also result in a more authentic experience for you. Most of the main attractions in Lisbon are in walking distance to each other, so discover the city on foot and if you want to take a tour, make sure to sign up for an authentic small group tour. The next one is easy too. Respect the locals and simply don't do anything you wouldn't do at home. Last but not least, try to use Lisbon only as a starting point for your holiday and keep your stay in the city short. As there are numerous picturesque areas and cities in Portugal which are only a short train or bus ride away. I highly recommend to watch my other video which focuses on alternative sites and things to do in Lisbon but also in the area around the city. Alright, before we dive into the beauty of the city, let's have a look at the map. This is Lisbon and there is its touristic center. Most of Lisbon's major attractions are located in the historic center. Here the main neighborhoods are Alfama e Castillo, which is the oldest neighborhood of Lisbon and contains the majority of historical sites and fado bars. Baixa is the heart of the city center and an elegant district featuring impressive squares and boulevards. Baixo Alto, on the other hand, is a residential neighborhood, which is also famous for its nightlife. Chiado is for the most part a shopping area, with a mix of old and modern shops as well as cafes. A short drive out of the center you can find Belém, which is famous for its palace, promenade and of course its Pastel de Nata. Apart from walking, you can use the great metro network to get from the airport into the city or to visit attractions which are further away. A great spot to start the day in Lisbon is Zenit, where you can find a wide selection of breakfast options. Try to come early to avoid waiting times. Okay, time to walk off a little bit of the calories and head to an attraction where we can get an overview of the city. The iconic Elevador de Santa Justa, which was inaugurated in 1901, is just a short walk away. This neo-gothic lift is the only remaining vertical one that connects the lower streets of the main Baixa with the higher ones. That being said, I recommend walking uphill first to enter the platform to the lift from the higher side and take the lift downwards. This way you get a little workout in and avoid the crowds by swimming against the street. We keep roaming the hills and head up to Alfama e Castillo. As stated earlier, this is the oldest neighborhood of Lisbon and home to many sites including the National Pantheon, the Lisbon Cathedral and of course the Sao Jorge Castle. My best tip here is to simply get lost and enjoy the views from the many viewpoints like Santa Lucia or Portas de Sol before walking back into the direction of Baixa. Now that we arrive back down in Baixa, we head to the waterfront to check out one of the national monuments of Portugal, the Praça de Comercio. This impressive square was once the location of the Royal Ribeira Palace until it was destroyed by the big 1755 Lisbon earthquake. 
After that, it was completely remodeled. A rectangular square in the shape of a U was constructed, open towards the Targas River. The buildings have galleries on their ground floors and the arms of the U end in two large towers, reminiscent of the monumental tower of the destroyed Ribeira Palace. Additionally, a triumphal arch was built forming the entrance to the central Rua Augusta Promenade. It's about time to grab something to eat after all the sightseeing. Luckily, the timeout market is just around the corner. Simply stroll along the waterfront till you arrive at the Caix du Sotere station. It's right opposite of it. This might look like any other trendy food hall, but it is indeed a successful transformation of a rundown, rarely used traditional food market, where some of Portugal's best chefs offer a variety of national favorites, such as bacalhau or the famous pastry pastéis de nata. Fat and happy, another walk is in order. But first, we gotta take the train which conveniently leaves right from the station on the other side of the road. Our destination is Belém, where you can check out the palace, before going for a stroll through the nearby park, followed by the promenade along the waterfront. Shortly after, you arrive at the Monument of the Discoveries, which celebrates the Portuguese age of exploration during the 15th and 16th centuries and features altogether 34 figures from the history of the discoveries, including the likes of Henry the Navigator and Vasco da Gama. You can enter the monument and head to the viewing platform to see Belém from above. When in Belém, you shouldn't miss the UNESCO World Heritage Site called Torre de Belém, a 16th century fortification that served as a point of embarkation and disembarkation for Portuguese explorers and as a ceremonial gateway to Lisbon. On the way back to the city center, you should check out a rather new attraction called the LX Factory. This former industrial complex is situated right next to Lisbon's iconic bridge and has been transformed into a creative hub. With its many shops, restaurants, small art galleries, cafes and even an insta-famous library, this area is like a mini-city within the city. For sunset, you should go back onto the hills in the old town, where you can enjoy incredible vistas from viewpoints such as the Miradouro da Senhora do Monchi. Or you ask a local for an insider tip. The Pechisqueira Conquistador near the castle is a great spot to enjoy a typical dinner, especially after the castle has closed and the majority of visitors have left. As for day trips, Sintra is the most popular destination for a reason. Located just a half an hour drive away from Lisbon, this charming town is famous for its numerous historic palaces and castles. Especially the picturesque Palacio da Pena is a true magnet for visitors. My recommendation for you is to come early and check out the beautiful park of the Quinta da Regalaira right when the doors open. Instead of visiting the often overcrowded Peña Palace, I suggest to go for a little hike to the high cross in the park surrounding the palace. Last but not least, it is worth noting that also the town itself is beautiful and worth a visit. In matters of accommodation in Lisbon, I advise you to stay in and around the area I focused on in this video, especially if your stay is short. For this I have two recommendations of modern boutique hostels for you that also offer private rooms. The first one is the Wheel of Tourists Hostel, which is located in Baixa, just a few steps away from the big Praça de Comercio. The hostel has a great atmosphere and offers various activities. The second place where I stayed is located in the same area and was my favorite hostel in Lisbon. The Good Morning Solo Travelers Hostel makes you totally feel at home, is super social and offers one of the best breakfasts I've ever had in a hostel. And that's it for the major sites of the Portuguese capital. In the next episode I want to show you the lesser known attractions in Lisbon and inspire you to venture out of the city to explore the coast and go surfing. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel for new travel videos and make sure to check out the related travel guide on my website, where you can find all the mentioned spots and many more personal recommendations for restaurants, cafes and tours. Thanks for watching.